Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the preview event for Bloomborough. Today we're taking a look at a green-white rabbit, a go-wide creature deck that can also go very tall with cards like the Burrow Guard Mentor, a two-mana star star, power and toughness equal to the number of creatures we control, so reminiscent of Bunnycorn, which is also a rabbit coincidentally, although it does not have trample like the Mentor, and we don't have a lot of other non-land permanents besides creatures, so may as well play the Mentor with trample. Then we also have two copies of Phineas, a 2-2 with a Vigilance and Reach. When Phineas attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature we control. That's a token or rabbit, which is almost every creature in this deck. And then if we have total power, 10 or greater, we also get to draw a card. And then at the Valley Quest Callers, another awesome payoff, a 2-3, giving other rabbits we control plus one plus one. Also applies to bats, and we do have a couple bat tokens throughout. And whenever one or more rabbits or bats enter, we also get to scry one, so it can help hit or land drops if necessary, or find more action. So these are some of the payoffs. We also get to hop to it at 3 mana. This is our new token maker, making 3 1-1 one, one rabbit creature tokens. So this is awesome to help us go wide and uh, grow cards like the Burrow Guard Mentor, as well as set up Convoke on Knight Errant of Eos, which is not a rabbit but still fits quite nicely into the strategy where we're going wide, making lots of creatures, and then Knight Errant can find even more if we can uh, Convoke it out. Then the War Leader can be a 4-4 that immediately pumps a team if we attack, giving the attacking creatures plus one plus one. Can also make additional 1-1 one, one tokens, and it also has Offspring, although it's going to be six mana total to make a pair of War Leaders, so that's not going to come up until later in the game. And then we've got a nice selection of one drops, with the Valley Might Caller being one of the better ones, picking up an additional plus one counter whenever another rabbit enters, or another frog, being a frog itself means we get to grow Might Callers with additional Might Callers at least. Then there's the Paw Patch Recruits, a 2-1 with Trample, also has Offspring for 2 mana to make an additional 1-1 one, one copy of it. And then whenever a creature we control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, we can put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature we control, other than the targeted creature. So that can also be good against removal heavy decks to give us a few more plus one counters that we can spread around. And then making the token with the Recruit is also a way to enable the seasoned Warren Guard a 1-2, but when it attacks we get to give it 2 additional power until end of turn if we control a token. So that's where the Recruit can come in handy, as well as hop to it. And then the Evangelist can also make a 1-1 bat when it enters or dies. Also has Battle Cry, it's another way to pump up our team. And that uh, pretty much covers every card except for Season of the Burrow. Another uh, curve topper here that I'm trying out can potentially make five rabbit tokens for five mana. So it's like a more expensive but more powerful hop to it. But we can also occasionally take out opposing non-land permanents or maybe return something from our graveyard. So it has some nice options. But of course at five mana it's quite pricey and we cannot convoke it out unlike the Knight Errant. And then the mana base also gets to play with Oak Hollow Village, especially nice in the late game if we maybe top deck a hop to it. We can now pay a green and tap it to put a plus one counter on each of those tokens. And then a one village as well to maybe find a uh, rabbit in the top six cards of our library if we sacrifice it. Then we still need plenty of basics since we cannot use cards like the village to cast hop to it. So we still need enough other white sources, which is why we have the seven planes. And then we have a couple dual lands, as well as Cavern of Souls naming Rabbit to make those uncounterable. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Could use a third or fourth land even, but uh, I think we can keep. On the draw especially. Start with a Might Caller, since this one will grow as more Rabbits enter. And then next turn we have a few options. Could wait to play this with Offspring to give us a token for the Warren Guard. Opponent on the red-white mouse deck. Alright, now that we found another Recruit, I'm in favor of play Recruit, play Warren Guard. And then next turn I have the option of playing this with Offspring to uh, enable the Warren Guard. Or we can wait and then at 4 mana with War Leader we can potentially start making tokens. But we need a token in play when we attack with a Warren Guard for it to get pumped. 2-2 two, two, Haste Prowess. And a Manifold Mouse. Yeah, that's one of the better payoffs to enable Valiant and give Double Strike. 
They also have a uh, celebration trigger from Battle Mouse to enable Valiant if they want to. So could see a 3 3 double strike attacking. So I'll take 6. Could be convinced to trade for the Battle Mouse. If I play Quest Caller, I do get to attack with everyone next turn. So it is reasonable to just take 8. And found another recruit. So, yeah, if I offspring, I get two extra damage. But if I play the quest caller, I get more than two extra damage. So, let's try that instead. And this way we get to scry. Look for a fourth line, perhaps. Another Warren Guard, not ideal. So think we can send in everyone, and then maybe a recruit can trump if necessary. Opponent takes it, falls to 6. This is also a card I considered in my mouse deck as a way to enable Valiant, but there's not a ton of room for colorless sources. So now the main concern is our opponent enabling Prowess a bunch and pumping up the Challenger. Upon going after Quest Caller, at least we can uh, get some plus one counters out of it. So it can grow the recruits. And let's say one of our creatures with Trample, another recruit perhaps. And another Manifold Mouse. So they can give Trample and Double Strike. Opponent diversifying a bit. So double strike, double strike. That's 12, so I would have to chump. So maybe putting the counter elsewhere would have worked out better. And the Heartfire Hero. Yeah, they've got a lot of blockers, and I did not find my fourth line, sadly. So now what? If I play Recruit with Offspring, I do get to grow Might Caller twice, up to 7. And then Warren Guard hits for 3. So Hero on Warren Guard. And then we have a 10 Trample. Yeah, I guess that could do it. And our opponent dies. Sweet. Close one here against the mouse deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And sure, we can try this. Double Might Caller. We'll have to take a bit of damage of Brushland. Opponent does the same. So turn two can play another one, especially if we find a one-drop. Opponent on the raccoon deck. And yeah, the Might Caller gets around, so also grows off raccoons entering. Alright, now we can play the Mentor instead. And then next turn maybe Might Caller into Quest Caller. Still don't have an attack into the 2-1 first strike, also very nice to play early. So the raccoon deck off to a great start. Could technically double block the collector to trade for it, but that seems a bit risky. It's gonna be a geological appraiser next. Finding a veteran. Okay, so... For now, it's going to be Might Caller into Quest Caller. Miss out on the Scry, but we get an extra plus one counter, which is probably more relevant. And then we probably need to hit the brakes since we're getting pretty low on life. 
It's going to be tricky to convoke Night Aaron since I can't afford to tap too many creatures. I would love to find a hop to it to make some tokens. Alright, so can play the War Leader, but then if I convoke Night Errant, I have one blocker that's asking for trouble. Then we're basically dead on board. So yeah, that's not going to work. Could still play the War Leader, and then next turn look into Night Errant, or I can convoke it now, maybe only tapping, let's say, two or three creatures. And then I'll have leftover mana to cast more spells. Let's try this. And we found recruits. And another quest caller is nice, or we could go with two one drops. Um, definitely get quest caller. And then maybe recruit we can play with offspring. And play the quest caller now. Get to scry. Evangelist seems fine. And still no attacks. Collector attacks. Opponent probably needs the mana. For their bird dragon. Yeah, that's a good one. Opponent's got a lot of four powered creatures, and all of a sudden I'm at uh, three life. Well, that was unexpected. So if I play the Evangelist, sure we can block, but the uh, ability will still trigger, and then we likely die. So I guess my uh, only play here is War Leader. Pumping the team and attack all out, pretty much. But I don't think we'll have enough for lethal. Season of the Burrow would be fun. And attack all out. And pump the team. Alright, let's see what we have here. We have over 20 trample damage, plus another 13. But our opponent just needs to keep their flyer alive. Yeah, they might be forced to block with a Dragonhawk after all. I guess they can block a quest caller. And not lose the dragon hawk, so yeah, I think they figured it out here in order to survive. So our opponent's at one, and then dragon hawk can attack for lethal here. Yep, yeah, opponent did the math. Now they don't have as many four power creatures, but just five damage is enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Double Might Caller is a good start. And then lots of one drops to enable a convoke on Night Errant. You can also make tokens with a recruit. Opponents got their own Might Caller. Maybe in a uh, squirrel deck in black or green. So, next turn, play another Might Caller, play Warren Guard, and then recruit we could play with Offspring on turn 3 to enable the Warren Guard. And then Rotcaller can start draining us next turn as well. Now Mentor's interesting. I think we still want to get a Mightcaller in play while we can to start growing it. But then maybe next turn instead of playing Recruit with Offspring, I can play Mentor alongside it. And then do we want to hang back? Yeah, let's take it easy. We have Knight Errant to kind of take over the late game, so I'm not really in a hurry to try and race. And this way if they have one removal spell I can still maybe double block the rot caller successfully. Opponent is playing with three tree city, a card we could include in our deck as well. In a deck that's going wide it can generate a little bit of extra mana, although this call us to start out. 
Now a Baker's Bane duo makes a food. And Quest Caller was a good draw as well. So I've got a few options. Could try and convoke the Knight Errant this turn, which I don't mind. Just go Recruit, Mentor, Convoke, Knight Errant for the full amount. Means I will be mostly tapped out. But then next turn we're setting up for a powerful attack. And I don't really expect any board wipes out of the Squirrel deck. Found another Knight Errant and War Leader looks good. Although I'm stuck on three lanes at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. We'll find one eventually with this cry from Quest Caller. And get to untap. So, yeah, go Quest Caller, another Warren Guard. And convoke another Knight Errant. Could look into setting up some attacks with our large tramplers. Phineas I can keep since we're gonna use Knight Errant here. So creatures are good uh, since I'm not gonna be able to find a land with it. So Phineas, another quest caller. And then do we wanna attack? 10 10 is probably good to go. 7 7 as well. And then one blocker. Yeah, I guess if I only attack for 17, I leave myself vulnerable to the Rotcaller next turn. So I either attack all out, forcing at least a couple chum blocks, or I keep multiple blockers back. Yeah, let's maybe just send in the Mentor. So now our opponent has three mana. Camellia the play. But we do get to untap. Alright, so still no fourth line for a war leader, but looks like quest caller is gonna be pretty effective. And then now I could look for a land. Another night errand's not bad either. But uh, yeah, if we attack all out, I think we've got it. So yeah, both decks kind of struggling to hit their land drops, but Convoke is a useful mechanic for those scenarios. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one, start with a Might Caller. And maybe play the uh, Mentor on two. Facing a Candy Trail. So it could be a food deck, could be maybe a combo deck. But yeah, Might Caller, turn one. Still sort of liking the Mentor, although could also be convinced to play a pair of Recruiters. Opponent cuts down the Might Caller. Alright, now that we drew another Mentor, I'm fine playing it out. Quest Caller is going to be a little bit better once we already have an established board, although the Scry 1 could still help. Could uh, play the Recruit with Offspring, pretty good in the face of Spot Removal. But I'm more likely to... Played for one mana alongside another mentor. Our opponent passes. Kind of have to play these now. Yeah, I guess we can play the recruit. Opponent had another removal spell, it seems. Go for the throw it this time. Still gonna play the mentor. And then next turn we hopefully get to attack. Urabrask's Forge is next. That's okay. So, no great attack here. And then we have to decide if we want to get the quest caller down. Or now I'm kind of liking Warden Guard plus Recruit with Offspring to go wide. And then next turn play the uh, quest caller to pump the team. If our opponent's got a board wipe, at least we'll have the quest caller left over as well. At some point we can also look into using the village to give us more plus one counters. So now if they try to remove my mentor, I'll get three plus one counters, which is pretty good. And then we also have a token for the Warden Guard to attack for three. 
Poisoner makes another food. And they can play a 3-2 lifelink if they want. Alright, that's fine. And then take two from the forge. So quest caller, pump the team. Can uh, give quest caller a plus one counter if we tap carefully. Seems to be the play. And our opponent might just be dead here, even if they block with the Poisoner. That's gonna be just enough, I believe. Alright, GG's. I guess they could still block the Warren Guard and then fall to one. So they're not quite dead. Since, yeah, these had Trample, Warren Guard does not. So points at one. If they have a Sweeper, they can get back into it. Scavenger's Talents is acceptable. Opponent levels up. I'll take three damage just in case. Alright, so not much has changed. They get to mill two cards. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand would actually be reasonable if we had a second green source, because then Might Caller into double Might Caller is an excellent start. We're not guaranteed a second green source, and otherwise I'll be stuck casting a single creature per turn, so I don't think I can risk it. This is a bit more balanced. And up against the black white bats. Alright, luckily he drew another Might Caller. So we get to curve 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll take a Knight Errant as well, as something we can maybe convoke along the way. Opponent off to a great start with Channeler, which can grow as they gain life. Alright, now I could play a Mentor instead. Which is going to be better once we hop to it afterwards. And I'm okay trading. Even though Might Caller is going to keep growing and they could move the counter onto the bats. Channel are still quite scary. So yeah, this is going to be a race. Our opponent gets to fly over. They can lose life to a Caves of Koilos to fly the Channeler. And a Virtue, great answer to the Might Caller. Alright, so still going to hop to it. And then we can uh, attack here, but Pun might still take the trades, put three counters on Ruin Lurker, so the fact that they're not taking that trade cannot be good news for me. Next turn, War Leader could pump the team when we attack. Looks like they have another removal spell, Bitter Triumph this time. So we lost our main threat. The Vigilance is also quite relevant in this racing situation. But we could go double Quest Caller. And then there's a chance we don't die next turn. Season I wouldn't be able to cast, so it's not very useful. So if I attack now, opponent blocks, takes 6, falls to 8. They can attack me for a bunch in the air. I fall to 1, and then War Leader hopefully can cross the finish line. So yeah, I guess we'll attack. But if they can gain life, we are dead. And yeah, that'll do it. Whenever a bant attacks, they gain one life. Alright, maybe I gave up the goods too soon here. But the opponent also could have attacked with a Rune Lurker bant, and then we would have been dead on board. So they're giving us a chance. Still don't think this is enough to win, necessarily, but I'll go for it. Attack bump the team is all I've got. Block, 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 take four. And then 
Channeler can fly over next turn with Caves of Coilus. So yeah, they miss lethal, but they're not going to get punished. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand. If only we also had a one drop, so we could curve one drop, mentor, and then hop to it, plus knight errant in the same turn. Opponent's got a ley line in their opener. And no one drop, sadly. Alright, so maybe a domain deck of sorts. Found the evangelist. So, for now, mentor. And no removal. And, uh, yeah, we can hop to it, or we can play Evangelist. Hop to it deals a bit more damage right now, but it's maybe better to save this in the case of a board wipe to play it alongside Knight Errant in the same turn. So let's try Evangelist. There's also a world where we wait to cast Hop to it and then use Village in the same turn to grow all those tokens. Opponent with the invasion, so they're ramping maybe towards an Atraxa, who knows. We could play Phineas. And then another Mentor. And then next turn we certainly have Lethal if we Hop to it and we still have two Mentors attacking. Yeah, question is if we need to play around a Sweeper or not. In which case going Hop to it plus Knight Errants. Is not a bad starting point. Won't be able to find other knight errands this way, but can find everything else. Yeah, quest caller looks good alongside maybe another mentor at this point. Although getting a one drop allows me to maybe empty my hand a little bit better next turn. And these can attack. So our opponent already pretty much needs a board wipe. But now we have more leftovers in hand. Don't know if an Atraxa can gain them enough life to survive. It's gonna be a season of weaving. At least doesn't bounce my tokens, so that's nice. And now Quest Caller can pump our uh, rabbits once again. So maybe go Might Caller into Quest Caller. And then I can still redeploy a mentor. But this is probably going to be enough for lethal. Don't think they'll have anything for single green. Alright, so yeah, tokens dodging their board wipe was pretty useful. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Do not have a one drop and no third land either. So this one's a little questionable, since this might end up being a little clunky. If I do find especially one drop into land, that would be the dream. But just a third land to curve, let's say, mentor into hop to it could be okay. I'll try it. Opponent's also green-white, so it could be the mirror match. Found a third land in the meantime. But yeah, not having a one drop and being on the draw might put us too far behind. Opponent's got the quest caller. So the plan is still probably mentor and then hop to it and then maybe hope to play defense. Opponent's got to recruit. So I might call her up to a 4 4. Yeah, really need the mentor to hold off the opponent's attacks here. a turn. The Might Caller is going to keep attacking here, but hopefully the rest gets shut down for now. Opponent's going to hop to it as well, so yeah, that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. And 
and the Warren Guard. So the Might Caller is making all the difference. Can play War Leader, but that card's not great when you're playing defense. So instead, Quest Caller into Phineas is probably the best I've got. And then Land 5 is probably okay. But if our opponent goes all out, we might just be dead. Especially now with another quest caller. Alright, well, we've got all the same cards in our deck. But uh, yeah, being on the play with the turn 1 might caller is going to make the difference. Bunnycorn, a card we don't have ourselves. Mentor is just kind of a better version, but they might be playing both. So I don't think there's a point in figuring out blocks. I'll do the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We don't have a one drop, but maybe being on the play makes up for it. And then Double Knight Errands plays a late game quite well. Opponent's black white. And then name Rabbit. Just a 1 1, so still dies to cut down. It's gonna be a Bartolome. And hop to it was an excellent draw. Still kind of liking Evangelist, and then next turn we can hop to it and Convoke Knight Errant in the same turn. And for now, attack for three. Chaplain to fill the graveyard. So maybe they're trying to assemble some graveyard combos. And our opponent just got back, uh, back street. Marauder Cavern in the Graveyard. Okay, so we can stick to the plan. Could even play the Recruit as well. And then still hop to it and Convoke Knight Errant for the full amount. And I'm okay attacking with a Bat to trade for Chaplain. So I can tap the uh, Evangelist. And Knight Errant finds Quest Caller to pump the team. And then maybe a Might Caller as well. Or we could go Recruits with Offspring in case there's a board wipe. Might be better than Might Caller here. To set up the Convoke on Knight Errant. So these can attack. Opponent accepts the trade. Yeah, Trample's a big deal here, that's the main difference with the Bunny Corn, which also counts non-creature permanents, like artifact tokens, but in this deck specifically, Mentor is the way to go. So we'll see what our opponent can come up with. Another Champlain. That's probably not gonna cut it. Especially with a Quest Caller pumping the team. So can just play this and attack. So we likely had enough in play already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand could be alright. Double quest caller to pump the team, good with hop to it. But no one drop and no third land at the moment. So there's definitely... A fail case here. I'll still try it. With the scry from Quest Caller, we can more easily get to a third land. And we found one. Opponent maybe on an Insidious Roots deck. As we see, a turn two cauldron already. So I might be convinced to play the Mentor now to trample over random chum blockers. As opposed to Quest Caller here, which uh, would let us cry. 
but we need Trample. Next turn I also have the option of going Phineas plus a Warren Guard, and then wait to hop to it. Opponent's got the Tyvar on curve as well. Minus hitting Bartolome. Plus they have another in the graveyard for Soul Cauldron, so yeah, that's uh, not ideal. So if I were to hop to it, I get a 4-4 Trample. Opponent can activate Cauldron, and then I guess we could still take out Tyvar. Unless they sack Cauldron, uh, which I don't expect them to do. So, sure. Can hop to it. So, Tyvar down. Limits some of the nonsense they can pull off with Insidious Roots. So they did not use Cauldron yet, maybe waiting on the Insidious Roots. There's our first new card, the Fountain Port. And a repossession, getting back Bartolome and Tyvar makes sense. So now there's no creature in the graveyard for Cauldron at least. So let's try and keep it that way. I guess they can always sacrifice Maverick and then use Cauldron afterwards. Yeah, this turn, I think I'm liking Might Caller. Warren Guard Phineas, and then next turn double Quest Caller can pump up the whole team a bunch. So make sure the Auto Tapper doesn't get us here. And then I'm just attacking with a Mentor this turn. And then Phineas can pump the team next turn as well. Opponent replays Tyvar. And uh, they milled a couple creatures on the Strutstein, one of them. But gets back the Maverick. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have any Insidious Roots yet. And without it, the deck doesn't necessarily look too impressive. The Adept can replay creatures out of the graveyard. But hopefully there won't be a next turn. So double quest caller. Don't think it's worth it to attack Tyvar, since they can just chump if we attack with only one creature. And I don't want to send my huge trampler at it. I guess Might Caller could go after Tyvar, but then at that point I think going face is going to be a little bit better. And yeah, opponent scoops it up, just too much damage. Alright, so we get to see our green-white rabbits in action, and yeah, the deck certainly packs a punch. Question remains, can this deck compete on the ranked ladder going forward? Since of course we need to take these results with a grain of salt, we're playing in the preview event, so we're not necessarily playing against meta decks, but once we go back to the ladder, decks like Monorad Aggro with a slick shot could be a problem, since we don't have a ton of reach and flying creatures in our deck and no real removal either, so that deck could easily outrace us in the air. But uh, yeah, maybe this deck can compete with Boros as the go white deck of choice. This deck may be not quite as explosive since we're lacking those goblin tokens early on, but we still get to make a lot of tokens and then we've got more anthem effects to pump up the team. So it's going to be interesting whether or not this deck will make it into the meta. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.